Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the second session of Belkinus Necro Hunt. You guys are in the dungeon. Uh, Nathaniel just opened the great door, seeing the ladder leading up to the surface. Uh, and you guys have Eliza, the very extremely young elf girl, uh, now in your care. What do you do? Well, there are still three people upstairs that I have charmed as well as the two tied up over by the invisible pool. I don't know where this ladder leads, but it's most likely just going to lead back to the surface. So, if anyone wants to go up, they can. Otherwise, I'm going to return to our new captives. I think I'd rather come out the way we came in, just because I know the safe way out. I don't really want to be taking her through a, a, through an entryway that I don't know what's waiting on the other side. For all we know, there could be more. I would agree. We could always come back down for it. I will admit, my curiosity is getting the better of me, though, that, looking up at the ladder. Means, then by all means, go ahead. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll look for trouble, and if there is none, I'll come back down and tell you. If I'm dead, that was nice you'll know. You. <laughs> yes, it was very yes. nice. I'm going to start walking back up the stairs. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> I will say, if you guys choose to go out the way that you came, there's no need to like do any whatever adjustments. I'll just fast travel you guys there, because you know the way. Good. Yep, good. No, I want to <laughs> roleplay walking through all of these steps. I see no. a staircase right over there. Take no. me there. Watch. No, uh, stop it. There I am. Oh my god. And in the oh, meantime, I got, I got, I got. I swear to God. In the meantime, you can't stop me, Enoch. Uh, you're. Are you going up the ladder? I'm gonna poke my head up to the top, to see what's going on up there. All right. You poke your head up, <laughs> and you can see that there is a humanoid that is hovering above in the air about like 10 feet off the ground, kind of in a lazing, Fuck. lounging position. Fuck. Question mark at the end, hi, hello. Oh, you say this to the person? <laughs> no. No, okay. I'm thinking this. They can seem just, to be tossing I... some small things into their mouth as they are lounging. Can I make a check to see what this this person if or you would this like, thing is yes, about? You, you can take a perception check to try and get a closer look. It is the dead of <laughs> night right now. You guys went in while uh, it was sunset and about an hour or so has passed. Okay. 16. You notice this figure is wearing some robes and what looks to be some kind of plated armor and a headpiece of some kind. Do you have dark vision? Yes, I do. This is the same figure I that was down awesome. here earlier wearing the bone mask. He is not taking notice of you. He's quite a few feet off, kind of in the distance, um, but in, in shouting distance, lounging in the air, eating berries. Wait, you mean the one that went through the portal, the boss of this room? Yep. Yes. Okay, oh my God, it was sure. just a dimension. <laughs> I hate it. I... <laughs> Oh, if I didn't have a child in my arms. <laughs> yep. I don't know this. I'm yeah, doing my own I thing. I don't know what he's saying. <sighs> do you do anything with this information, uh, Enoch? Oh, God, I'm... I'm... I'm split. Uh, shit, uh, I gotta make a quick choice. All right. <clears throat> I am going to get to the top, and I am going to attempt to approach. Okay. You come out of some illusory grass as it kind of the the uh, its form kind of wobbles a bit as you exit out of it, and uh, the the man Bloodstride just kind of uh, continues to eat, not really paying much attention to you. But you see his head tilt a bit. Oh, I was expecting someone else. I take it that my team well, of pupils is dead now. Well, well. Oh, most certainly, I guess. However, I'm going to admit, at least to this point, I'm probably no match for you. He th tosses another berry into his mouth. Oh, probably. But that is a shame. They were very nice. They were criminals. Hmm. Were they? And so are you. Yes, yes, justice bringing me to justice and all that, of course. He drops all the berries and kind of brushes his hands. 
oh, well, ta-ta, I hope uh, to never see you again. And uh, he starts to slowly f- hover away with his hands held behind his back. Wait. He continues to float away. I may not catch you today. I may not kill you today. But I have one question in mind. He pauses and turns. Ooh, this should be fun. I make my approach, no weapon in hand. Everything's holstered. I stop about 10 feet away from him. It would be unfair for me to not at least hear you out. Why? He lowers his head and and lowers his shoulders a bit. (sighs) And I thought this was going to be interesting. Oh, well, listen, I've got things to do. You've got sleep you need. I hope to never see you again. And he turns. Goodbye. And he waves to you while he floats away into the darkness. I quick draw and motherfucker. (laughs) Yeah, he did. Oh, my God. (laughs) I I really want to go after him, but I have no possible way of winning. A few moments as he floats away, um, you see him open a portal very similar to the one uh, that you saw him initially walk into. And he steps into it and the portal vanishes. I... Can I do a quick draw and try and put something in him like, you can. as he's leaving? Go ahead. Uh, please. Don't fuck me, This Gil. just in, rugged cowboy penetrates old men. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you fire, you quickly fire your that. pistol as he's I'm stepping fired, through the portal. And then I miss. <laughs> and you can see that his skull-like mask glows very briefly like a flash. And there's a bright circular barrier that your bullet ricochets off of. Ping! And I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Um, that's what I, oh, that's about oh, what I expected. Oh, fuck, that's right. Oh, no. Yeah, that's about what I expected. This is why guns don't yeah. work against wizards, guys. This just <laughs> in, in surprising turnaround, rugged cowboy penetrates himself. <laughs> oh, my God, stop it. Stop <laughs> that it. Right All right, that, that, that'll be my last oh, one. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank That's you. Better. I'll be here for the next three hours. You you shoot it and you don't even need to move your body as you know that uh, this bullet, it's as if it was fired back by an enemy and you don't move a single inch and as it whizzes by your cheek. Dang. <laughs> Tiny little scar, a little bit of blood. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't touch you. You better run. <laughs> you better run. <laughs> and I walk back down. Yep. In the meantime, the rest of you have exited the way you came, and you come out uh, just in the same spot. Let me, uh, well, there's no need to pull up. Let me pull up the Belkinus map rather than the map that you came out of. You also see that it is pretty much the dead of night. You see the moon is out. Um, uh... And let me play some ambience. Some ambiance. I love ah. ambiance. Uh, for the people that I have uh, charmed, that charm is supposed to, I believe, last an hour, but let me check to be sure. Uh, where would they be right now? They would be just where you left them. Um, that would be, there we go. They would be just where you left them, them, kind of just right outside of the illusory. Uh, I mean, you left them unconscious. Oh, oh, oh no, the I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the three, yeah. yeah. The three that I charmed three and said, charmed. please go somewhere else. You don't need to see this. I would yeah. say, yes, all three of them are just sitting there and just are sitting around playing with the grass oh my around God. the two unconscious men that you mind slivered earlier. I ah. don't even, I don't suppose even with dark vision that this, there's a chance we're going to find these woods in the daytime or in, at night. We're going to have to wait till morning. You very well. I mean, you could. It would uh, risk getting a... Not risk. Yeah. You would get a point of exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that. Uh, <sighs> now, keep in mind, this is within walking distance of, you know, people closer to the inner wall uh, yeah, where there I are might... more guards. Yeah. Um, Nathaniel, I do you want to bring these people in? Because I'm going to be taking her down to the guard. How far away are we from... Oh, sorry. How far away are we from Belkinus? Uh, Belkinus proper is about a day's walk since you spent the day walking out of it. I don't need to go that far. How far is the gate? Oh, the gate. The gate is like, I don't know, like 20 20 minutes or so from where you are. Fantastic. In that case, I will say to these three men, allies, please, 
Come with me, uh, and bring those two friends of ours. We are going to go meet some other friends so that we can have a party. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course, our good leader. And they they pick up the two who are just still... Uh, Would you like me to go with you? Of course. I'm going to need uh, your... Should someone... Hmm? I, I hate to be that person, but should someone stay and wait for Enoch? Or we're just going to find him later? Oh. Oh, I assume that we were going to be doing that anyway. I'm wondering currently what's taking him so long. Perhaps he'll be coming out of these woods. Perhaps. Let's just... Let's get Little Miss home. It's... it's uh, Someone to... Sorry. But let's get the Little Miss here home. She's, it's cold. Yeah, she clutches at right. your leg. I just go and, like, pick her up again. Mm. Oh, Actually, right. that's a point. I snap my fingers. You... Go find our cowboy friend and bring him back. Mm. And I just point to one of the three charmed. Hi, <laughs> sir! You point to, like, uh, oh, no. let's see, what were they? There were there were a gnome. Yeah, there were a gnome, a human, and something else that I cannot remember. I want the it no- to be the gnome because the I gnome. think that that's funny. Yes, yeah. the gnome <laughs> pipes up and starts running off in the direction as uh, they actually know the the exit since they are familiar with the sewers and they start running off in the direction heading presumably towards Enoch. Would you want him to go with you to try and find the girls home then? I'm going to I think I'm going to take her to the guard. We have a deadline and as much as I would love to go She said that her the family woods, is in these woods, no? Yes, it's just too dark. The poor thing needs to sleep. Then why not have her stay with us for the night? After we get back, we can keep her safe for the night, and then it'll be easier for her to possibly remember during the day. Yes? Um, I'm going to look at her, actually. What do you think, dear? She just looks at you, kind of holding arms wrapped around your neck as you are, I, I assume, holding her up. Yes, I, I'm, I am holding her. Yes. Like a... And she just looks towards the woods longingly in the opposite direction of the wall and says nothing. She seems to be thinking. Okay. It's okay if you'd rather wait till morning and then we can just go find your home. That's She's absolutely fine. She says nothing and nods your head. I want to stay with you. Okay. Okay. Well, then I guess I'm staying in camp, Nathaniel. I'll start getting a fire going and keep little Miss safe. I realize I said Understood. she says nothing and then immediately said something. <laughs> the, okay. the joy no, of roleplay. Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel will say nothing. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> um, Damn it, Danny. <laughs> Renee, Renee will nod and just say, we will meet you back here in, say, an hour at most. Yeah. Yeah. Doing. Right, right. And I think after that, we all should have a conversation. All right. right. A talk between Fantastic. all of us is important. In that case, no, don't go find Enoch. He will find his way back here. Oh, He's probably like all the way over already. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <Come> back. <laughs> like without skipping a beat while he's jogging, you say that, and he turns mid jog back around like in a U turn. <laughs> Does not break stride. Up. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> Very well. Renee, let us move. And I'm going to go towards the, the gate. Be yep. safe, you two. That crowd was. I don't know if that crowd is still going to be angry at us. Just be careful, please. Hopefully, by now they will be asleep. I like to think so, but desperate and angry are a not good combination. Mm. She just gives a light wave as they're like walking away. Mm-hmm. And I'll start getting a fire going. <laughs> okie dokie. And now, as we continue to split the party. Uh, yes. Split it more. Well, right. I'm assuming, I'm assuming Renee, go find really me fast. some water. Like, no. <laughs> Everyone split. No, no, no. Like, yeah. What I'm assuming is that like it will be super fast with it. Like, no, no, just no. Drop yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm kidding around. I'm pulling. Okay, the, good. Yeah. I am make the like, queen make of like splitting the, the party, gang. and I'm sorry. <laughs> make like Scooby Gang and spread out and spread. Look for clues. No. And no, then just run like through all the same doorways. No, no, no. It's fine. Okay. So you guys start to head towards the inner wall. And you can see that there are some guards and you overhear one just on a on horseback. uh, And the horse seems to have like many supplies attached to it, like bags and and bedrolls and stuff. And you hear him sigh, more refugees. Come on. 
he kind of uh, gathers a few others, and he gallops towards you. What's wrong? Oh, well, we're just here to drop off a couple of people for you to have. Um, Are they hurt? We... Hungry? No, oh. but they probably... She, like, leans over. No, but they probably need to be arrested. <laughs> arrested? And he takes a glance and squints his eye. This is a human, so he has trouble seeing mm-hmm. in the dark. His eyes adjust a bit. This is why I wear a big yellow coat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We know exactly who you this are. Can't miss by the gods. Can't miss him. Right They're spine of death. Go manacles and a uh, mm-hmm. few of the guards grab you know some things to attach. And uh, what do you I do? I will raise my hand. I will raise my hand up. That will be unnecessary. They are currently under my protection uh, up until we arrive at the barracks. Hmm. The barracks. Uh, the. That would be where you would hold these people, yes? It would be. Though the barracks are inside, and... Well then, we should go inside. The human squints a bit. And what business would you have inside? I have already said, these people need to be put in the barracks. And I will gladly take them off your hands. Ah, if that is what you would prefer, then that is acceptable. But I would be more... I would be happier if I saw them all the way to the barracks to make sure that they don't escape. Members of the Spine of Death happen to be very crafty. Just earlier they were using illusionary magics to hide from us. No doubt a normal, uh, mundane person such as yourself might be caught unawares. He kind of pinches his nose a bit and sighs. Ah, you're one of those. All right, fine. If you want to have some kind of reassurance, the barracks are luckily fairly close to the wall and within eyesight. Come along. Follow me. And he starts to gallop ahead at walking pace. Uh, as we walk, I'm going to uh, whisper to Renee, uh, this, we are going to do the usual plan. Uh, as long as you are all right with it, I'm going to let you do the talking now, if that is all right. That is just fine by me. She, like, gives him a little wink of, like, reassurance, like, I got you. I know how we do. (laughs) All right. You guys start to head towards the inner wall, and just as he says, uh, when you lean at a certain angle, there are a setup, like, makeshift barracks, not a proper building barracks, but, you know, tents, things like that, set out uh, kind of inside the inner wall. And he starts to lead you kind of in, but stopping at the gate, of course. There. Safe enough for you. Yes, that will do just fine. Thank you. Indeed. Now, if I might have a few moments to speak with the prisoners, they have, or they may have information that is useful to me. One of them did escape. Hmm. Whatever is useful to you can be shared with the royal guard, don't you think? That depends on the information. Considering I am the one who is going to be exploring and trying to bring them in, I would prefer it if it stayed in-house. He gets off his horse and looks genuinely baffled. Are you trying to withhold information that could prove useful? To no, no, of course not. The, we're, the only thing we are worried about is it might be useless information. You see, it might have just been a singular occurrence, and who knows? We don't even know if they were using those garments for a one-time thing. You know, maybe they might be potentially copycats. We don't want to waste the the guard's time, especially when you already have so much going on. She, like, gives him, like, a very gentle pad. Is like... He crosses we his just arms. Want to make sh- Roll a persuasion. <laughs> okay! Oh. I will do so. Renee, you came in at the right time. Gentle pat. Hey, 17! Nice. Pat, 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 pat. She basically giving him like the doughy, the, the, the doughy eyes, like salt sparkles, like, listen, you work so hard, honey. Do like you you and your big old sh- like armor, like don't even worry about it. We got it from here. He just he just uncrosses his arms and breathes out a long sigh. <sighs> it's been a long day for this guy, you can tell. He's got bags oh, under his eyes. Uh, mm. Both of you, I assume, have dark vision, so you can see that yeah. he, his eyes are nearly bloodshot. Like, he has been awake for a while. Fine. Do what you want. <sighs> Just leave him at the gate when you're done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Of course. Oh, and 
here. Uh, he he picks something out of uh, one of his horse's bags. We normally don't do this. Merc work uh, often has promoted some unsavory behavior. People bringing in too many, but since we're short on hands, he tosses you a jingly bag. <gasps> Did he just will, pay me? I will. Oh, he tossed it to you. Okay. Oh, I don't know who he tossed it to. Did he just pay us, though? What did he, he most did he certainly just did. You just received 30 gold pieces. We got paid! <laughs> We're short on hands, and anyone bringing in someone from the Spine of Death, it's worth a little bit of thanks. But of course. Oh, we are, we are only happy to help. All right. I'll let you do your thing. And he starts to walk into kind of the inner side of the wall. All right. She, like, gives a little wave and then looks back over, completely drops the smile. All right, so we actually are we actually going to do this? It is up to you. Uh, I am, I understand that you have a personal attachment or disdain for their motive. The you ones that we found in Delnith, fuck them. They are going in the jail. I do not care. N- All right. No shit, I, even. The other two, I will give them to you. But they are going on the shit list. Oh, of course. Everyone who joins goes in the furthest rung down before they prove themselves. That's just how this goes. Fine. Like, like she's kind of like giving a, a little annoyed pat. She clearly is not super comfortable with the idea, but the fact that she can literally kick their asses after if they do any kind of shit, fine. All right, if so... Are, <laughs> if you are uncomfortable, then we do not have to go through with this. I am unsure. But that is why I rely on you. Very good. As he said, do your thing. So the rest of the the charmed ones are going to go in. The unconscious ones, we're going to actually unlock them and basically wake them up. (laughs) The charmed ones? Yeah, the charmed ones are going in. No, the charmed ones are going in. They're going to get arrested. Mm -hmm. Fuck them. You turn in the three charmed necromancers and they go without any trouble. And then the two unconscious ones, I'm basically going to smack them awake. Yep. You smack the tiefling Julius and the human Cyril. Ah! Oh, my head. I'm just going to be in the background. I am bad cop. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Renee is going to squat down and be like, All right, you two. I would like to take a moment to look around and see where you are. Oh, oh, Julius. We're at the the inner wall. Yes, you are. uh, You're going to turn us in? See, this is where it gets very interesting for you. You said that you had not performed any necromancy yourselves. Is that correct? Yeah, as much as we tried. And the tiefling just elbows him. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. We, we, we didn't. We didn't at all. Not, not one bit. I, try, I tried a little bit. I didn't do it, though. Are you going to try again? Mm, they both shake their heads. I'm doing an insight check. Most certainly can. Jesus Christ, that one dude just needs to put his foot in his mouth. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He really does. These two are shaking their heads, and it seems as though it was reactionary, and they are doing basically, it seems as though they want to live. Mm. And uh, you can tell that uh, they're pretty quick to follow whatever it is that you say right now. They are whimpering. They are fearful, Mm -hmm. and they are desperate. Listen. Listen, listen. I am going to be giving you a wonderful opportunity. Because, unlike your little friends over there, and she, like, points at the the cave, like, the the cell where all the other ones are sitting very politely and quietly, (laughs) you have an opportunity to change the way that you earn your keep. You are being invited to join us in our syndicate. The, she has a very like soft smile on her face. The human starts to beam a little bit. Oh, oh, Julius, this is this is the second chance that we want. Well, third chance now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So you're familiar with the three strike rule, yes? Mm, maybe. Which means you you only have one more strike before you are out. The tiefling tries his best to look tough. What's the catch? Don't perform necromancy. He squints his eyes at you. It is illegal, for one. And you need to do exactly what is required for working in our group. 
you need to go to Jameson's General inside of the city proper. If we hear by morning that you did not go, you will be added to a different kind of list. And yes. one that you will not survive long on. I believe that some people call it the shit list. Mm. Oh, that would be correct. <laughs> and the human is scared shit list. Uh, <laughs> he is shaking <laughs> in his bindings. And Renee just like pats his cheek very gently like, and you don't want to end up on that list. It is not very fun and it is not a very long time frame. Uh, Julius the tiefling pipes up. Wait a minute. We're supposed to go inside the city? How are we supposed to get past the guards? Well, you're already, on, really... you're already on the right side of the gate, aren't you? Ah. The rest is for you to figure out. <sighs> like we said, this is a chance. We're not going to make it that easy. If it were that easy, then everyone would be in. And honestly, that would be a lot more paperwork than it's worth. We have to make sure that you are actually capable of uh, running with us, per se. So... You can either take this opportunity or we can just have you sit in with your friends and see what happens to you later. The tiefling just throws his body onto the, the grassy ground and with a thud and he buries his face. <laughs> and the human pipes up. I think that means he'll do it. <laughs> oh, can he speak? And, can he speak? and of course... <laughs> If you choose to try to say something to the guards about our invitation, our second chance or third chance that we are giving you, I will deny everything and it will be your word against mine. <laughs> and the thing I, is, you're kind of already on the not so good side. I envy your chances, really. This is very true. It makes things very simple. I value that simplicity. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Guess we ain't got no choice. Julius? And Julius just kind of, uh, turns his head, now his cheek laying on the grass. Yeah, whatever. Fine, we'll do it. <laughs> welcome. Then I bid you welcome. Thank you very much. Right. Renee, we have an appointment to keep. You two do as well. Good luck. Bon chance? Wait, 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 wait. What about our bindings? Oh, of course. I thought they unlocked them when they woke them up. Oh, maybe, I guess you did. Maybe you did. Okay. I was assuming that, but that's fine. Okay, of, my of, bad. Of course. Uh, Thank actually, you. Actually, I mean, I'm not going to unlock them because that would be <laughs> bad. Uh, be, like, if the guards binded them and then we just unlocked well, it. Well, you're, you're, you're a decent, you're a decent yeah. distance away. Um, I understand, but, but I'm going to do something that will cause less questions. Right. Uh, ah. and, that, and that is, I'm yeah. going to say... Right. And I'm going to, like, go over to them, pull them up, and then I will walk them back to the guards with Renee. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? This isn't part of the deal. There are these mm. poor souls. They were actually totally innocent. They dressed them up as necromancers. Can you believe it? It was the wrong place at the wrong time. These poor souls. The human guard comes up. What? Re oh, God. We're going to have they to do are, another round going of questioning. Oh. That is acceptable. If you would like my report, I can give it to you uh, in triplicate, of course. One for you, one for myself, and one for the crown. Being the witch-taker wizard, I have done a great many services for the kingdom of Belkinus. One of his lieutenants is kind of like whispers, Hey, I heard of that guy. And uh, he goes, All right, fine. Scribe. He, uh, some guy comes over and, you know, you recount your story mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. them. And yep. so do the yep. two, you know, the two mm -hmm. captives, and yep. then they are brought in. Their bindings <laughs> about are taken how they off. were, they were ho like forced into service, pressed into it. They were enslaved they didn't have a by threat of death, and then <laughs> reanimation. Mm -hmm. We found them just in the nick of time, and mm -hmm. they told us everything when we were walking back. Really, they were heroes for not dying. And telling really? us everything we needed to know. <laughs> of course. The human uh, assigns a couple of escorts for the the two. They try anything funny, you know what to do. 
<sighs> Bonne chance, Damn. my friends. Necromancers. You two have a good night. You as well. And thank, thank you, you for your service. Yeah, yeah. And he goes back to looking at some paperwork. Well done. Yeah. All right. oh, Let's get back. Shit. You guys yeah. are hell yeah. All right. And I'm going nice. to say, uh, Enoch, you probably headed back towards them. Yeah. yeah? Well, I, I headed back to to find uh, uh, to find Luna. Yeah, about now. If you went so back I'm... through the sewers, then you could easily find your way back and find Luna yeah. just holding Eliza, who has fallen asleep in her arms. She's singing to her. Oh, she's sleeping. And you have made a campfire. Let me bring you all over to the map. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> yeah. I was just a I... heard from a very talented tiefling a few years ago. <laughs> there we go. Here's where you are. Tiefling's yes, really or right. something. Though. It is near midnight by now. As she hears crunching, she she does like prickle up a little bit, like you know, like she's got a kid. She looks and she sees it's you and lower relaxes her shoulders a bit. Oh, good to see you didn't die. Oh. I call it a lucky sliver right there, but no. Just uh, sit down and begin unpacking my swage and everything I need. And I am going to bring my crucible over to the fire. Just just taking off chunks of metal to, to put into the crucible and wait for it all to melt down proper. Okay, is this going to be crafty time? Yeah, it is. All right. I'm iron manning this shit. Time to make some bullets. What are you making? Silver or steel? Uh, For right now, considering how many shots I've already put off, I'm going to say let's make some silver bullets. Okie dokie. Just in case. So 13. 13. Okay. You manage to make six silver bullets. Enoch, I'm going to make something very clear to you. He points up at the sky one second as he's holding molten metal in hand with his tongs and begins to pour out into the billets. It's very she's looking at you. It was a very careful process. Mm. I'm sure it is. But I think you can listen to what I have to say while you're doing it. I wouldn't be paying attention. If I didn't have a child in my arms right now. <laughs> and so you have used up one I, of your silver bars. Uh, you have two left. Uh, with the intention of trying to make what usually would be 20, six is a massive failure. <laughs> Oof. They are very hard uh, to craft. Silver yeah. bullets. Yeah, when when you when you cool them, you notice like a, a few of them are malformed. Some of them, like some of the yeah. molten silver, has dripped out. Some of them have air holes in them after inspection. And I take the six that I have and I begin to swage them all into their casings. And <sighs> damn it. All right, now I'm listening. I want to make something very clear to you, Mr. Solomon. Mm hmm. If you ever point that thing at any of us, I don't care what the reason is, it'll be the last thing you do. I do not tolerate someone who turns on their own men. I don't care what you thought was happening. This righteous sense of, uh, of uh, uh, justice. You're going to need to abandon that for this mission. Sometimes you have to dress as the wolf to get to the alpha. All right. The notion is well and appreciated. Oh no, that's not a notion, that's a promise. I'll see to it that the you... Viscount gets your blueprints because you won't be making it back if you pull a stunt like that again. He looks up at you. You can almost see the dark glow from the eyes. Listen, I didn't have a mama to start with, and if I really needed one, I wouldn't start with you. The mission is clear. I'm just telling what you what's going to happen. 
I don't know if you've ever worked with people before, but if you think someone's doing something not right, maybe not, don't pull your weapons out on them. Talk to them. In the matter of, what, 24 hours, how many times did that man lie? And how many times did those lies benefit us? Lies are like a debt. A debt that you have to pay to the universe. And, and every time you lie, let me tell you a little bit about experience with debts. When you lie to the universe and you have to pay that back, it does it very cruelfully. And there is always collateral. And you want to know what pointing at you with the uh, he's pointing at you with the metal arm, by the way. <laughs> Do you know what collateral you almost caused? You almost delayed us enough to where this girl could have died. You knew there was a child down here. I didn't, but you knew, and you still didn't. You let whatever anger rose up in you, you let that cloud your judgment. You let him pick up that book. You let him read it. And then to he lied. We and then against. he lied some more. And then he lied some more. In every instance, he could have been telling the truth, being fully honest. For all I know, he could be letting criminals just walk away. I want, I want you to think about, I want you to think about this. Who hired us to come, come together? Yes, and somehow, in some way, you think that we should all be following the exact same rules. Um, this is off the wait. books. We are on a mission to capture I somebody. I know we're off the books. I know what we're on a mission to do. I also know that to do a mission like this, we have to abandon some of our own morals. We are meant to be, we're not supposed to be going in, guns blazing, announcing who we are. So going in and acting like we're one of them was really one of the smartest decisions made down there. I like to bring up that point. How was what he did was smart? Because now the black queen, the black vein queen knows we're coming. What will what she else? do now? That lie we have to pay for. Do you know, you want to know how that helped us? It got Renee close enough to this girl to where she could get her out of the cage without her getting hurt. It got me close enough to the enemy so that I could take them down. Yes, but think of the long run. I am thinking she of the long run. She knows we're coming now. She knows how? we're coming. As the, as the argument escalates, this girl starts to just sh shake a little bit in her dreaming. <laughs> No. You can argue this day and night with me. And but we just lost the major tactical advantage of surprise. And if you two keep on doing this, then honestly, it's going to cause a You're not here. Uh, at, I was uh, just going to say at that uh, at that um Yeah. Renee and uh Nathaniel do arrive after this argument continues. Uh, at this point, put their tokens. Let me I, you can justify uh, it all you want, Enoch. I'm telling you what's going to happen if what? you turn that on any of us again. I don't care what the reason is. Mm -hmm. A man that turns on his own is disgusting and vile. I walk, or I approach holding a bit of the berries in my hand, and I am, like, slowly eating them. What are we mm. justifying? I don't know, but it sounds very loud. I'm just gonna go start soothing the girl. She is still sorry, fast asleep, luckily. Sorry. Foolishness, apparently. Do one now? Right. I don't I exactly... It's... I think it's time we all talk about what we bring to the table, yes, so that we don't have another problem. If Nathan that is necessary. Nathan and would Renee, th you two work incredibly well together, and I'd like to know more about you. I would Let's... love to know what you two bring to the table as well. Well, I'm going to sit cross-legged at the fire. What do you want to know? Well, I can't say I've ever heard of the Witch Taker before, but admittedly I'm not from this part of Belganis. As the Viscount said, I'm from the Peaks. Hmm. Hmm. But I have to admit that ruse you two pulled was insanely clever and resourceful. It's not the first time I'm putting on the performance thing. When it comes to certain uh, criminal activity, it's much easier to get closer. Uh, what is he saying, Nathaniel? Enemies closer? Uh, friends close, enemies closer. Yes. 
Lynn something kind of similar. smiles as you say that. <laughs> something like that. I have to hmm. say I like the tactic. I mean, it is part of the reason I'm here in the first place. Um, That's the right. Lady... The, the Viscount said something about espionage, didn't she? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, yes. That was some years ago, though. I'm surprised it's still relevant. <laughs> uh, two criminal factions, I imagine, remind her that it's relevant every day. Hmm. That wasn't entirely my fault, but I can see why well, it would. I, I and like she's kind of like playing it off, but as, she, as she's looking at the fire, she kind of like softens a little bit. Because, well, to be honest, I was being a little bit selfish, uh, joining Natalia. Uh, I was just very much trying to find ways to get into certain groups that could help me defeat necromancers. In particular. She's just nodding and uh, listening. I won't pry. But I'm. I, I have to admit, I, I. Again, that was very clever what you both did. So I think it'll be helpful for us moving on. You. It is scary how well you're easy to. Li how easily it is. Uh, easy, easily you lie. Sorry. It's been a long day. No, you are totally, totally fair. I am absolutely exhausted. <laughs> you look it. <sighs> I pop another berry in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you well, see, it, he's been very much familiar with taking on underground activity, and it's the, the putting on of the mask is just practice, you know. Yeah, I could, I could understand that. Hmm. Well, I'm not good at what you do, but I'm sure you saw before, I'm pretty damn handy with the blade. You very much are, and I was going to ask about your uh, friend, the um, the man of oh. shadows that you create. Uh, it's just a trick I can do. Evens up the playing field a little bit. Uh, they call me the Ghost of Yesdal for it. Ah, that is a very uh, pretty title. Does that name <laughs> ring any significance to me? You may roll me a history check if you would like I will well I don't know shit <laughs> oh, no. first bad roll of Nathaniel's career that's okay you know you know Yedzel is a city in Balkanus so it's alright it's it's kind of something that's more relegated to the peaks I'm I'm a monster hunter that's what I do like the Viscount said I Three yetis I've taken down. I've been on well, countless, countless expeditions for wolves and bears. So, well, you said it was uh, uh, one and change. Technically speaking, you had help on the other three, well, yes. And she gives yeah. like a little bit of a, like a playful <laughs> wink of like a, come on, um, <laughs> but it's well, like a. Eh. Well, well, by help, I, I do have a partner. He oh. uh, he works with me pretty often. Um, Actually, uh, I didn't tell him I was leaving, which might be a problem later on, you know. Oh! <laughs> I didn't know I was leaving when we went to sleep, so, uh, that's something we'll have to deal with. Speaking of partners, <laughs> the shadow that follows you. Yes, what about it? I'd like to know more about it. Uh, she'll just kind of, like, uh, Give like a snap of her finger and uh, her shadow will extend and sitting beside her is the same shadowy man. Oh. You may present it. You have control of that token now. Yes, Ooh. yes I do. Let me just, come on out here, Echo Boy. Uh, an apparition, what creates it? Is it particularly powerful illusion magic? A, uh, a projection of your own psyche perhaps? It's more like a projection of my, of myself oh it's it um uh, well obviously obviously it doesn't look like me but it's like i'm projecting my own physicality who does it look like mm, my father actually my apologies no no don't apologize i'm proud my father was a great man uh, everything i aspire to be he's the reason i am what i am now i'm proud that uh Whatever magic I have that created it takes his form. 
I will mention that when I say my apologies, my eye, my eyebrow twitches just a bit. Oh, oh, mm. oh, a reaction. <laughs> His face moved. I, oh. I don't know if I noticed that. My passive is shit. If you'd fine. like to roll insight, you can, but. Sure, uh, it's, it's, but I doubt I noticed it. I, no, I want to. to. Sure. I mean, I don't. I don't yep. Okay. <laughs> Luna knows nothing. I have a blank face. My face never moves. Oh my god, my face always moves. What the fuck? My, listen, yeah, she, is so familiar. Like, she is so attentive oh to I, Nathaniel when he does react I to anything. That. It's like a. Oh. oh. I'm not particularly. Like, it's not that I'm not trying to hide it, it's just that it's a visual cue, so it's like. Mm -hmm. I'd yeah, say I was that probably it's fine. focusing on, like, the girl. So I just said, yeah. I have a child in my arms. Your shit is not on my mind right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I won't roll to like to counter it or anything. I'd say an 11 yeah. is probably fine if that's all right with Joe. Yeah. Nope. Mm -hmm. Hey. Uh, you do your father proud by showing his likeness and fighting alongside it. I'm continuing his legacy. I admire I, that you have something to follow. I like that. I go back to eating my berries. <laughs> and uh, I'll dismiss my echo so that girl doesn't wake up to scary shadow man. I don't know where I'm going to put him. But <laughs> you can just you delete have... it. Yeah. Renee will just like nod and say, um, I, I am a little bit uh, green, uh, if, to say the least. It sounds like you had a very strong connection. We did. Maybe raised me on his own. So I guess that's, that's to be expected, yeah? Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, this isn't... <laughs> my life story isn't important. It is, in a sense, at the very least, it shows where your values are. You have a very keen want to protect things that are important, whether or not it is important to what we need to do or just important to you. You are capable in terms of seeing the echo in the way that you performed. Um, I try to be. I'm not hmm. perfect. I still make mistakes. I mean, running down by myself was probably one of them. But There have been plenty of mistakes today, and hopefully they will not be repeated. She's kind of like <laughs> saying this, like not looking at Enoch, but also like, mm, the, we will we will grow, right? <laughs> I I hope so. I try at the very least I, to not make my mistakes cost anyone else but myself. You can see he's just tinkering, or tinkering away on his metal arm. What about you, Mr. Solomon? Like what he's... do you bring to the table? Oh, suddenly we want to know about me. Well, you're I mean, kind of sitting over there by yourself, tinkering away. It would be nice for you to join the conversa conversation. If I, if I recall correctly, the last time that someone tried to have a conversation with you, you rebuked it. Of course, Good. it doesn't matter much. You've shown in your actions everything that I need to know. And I As did you. Berry. And <laughs> what would that be exactly, Mr. Solomon? <laughs> All of you got a debt that you need to pay back to the universe, and somehow I'm gonna be implicated in that. You can see it's like one of the fingers like switch from like normal position all the way back to all the way forward. Ouch. And what are your debts, Mr. Solomon? I ain't got a debt. Mine we already all seem got to paid. have at least something. You can see as he twists off the arm and he pulls it off of his actual body and he throws it at Nathaniel. Did, at me? Immediately yeah. like moves like, in front like, of it. She will it. grab, I'm going to attempt tosses to catch it. it. Over. Oh, wait, just, just, just yeah. to make sure, I want, I want to specify. It over. Oh, are you not chucking it at you? Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, he's tossing oh. it over. He wants, you to, he wants you to grab it. Oh, okay. in that case, I'm still not going to move. Oh, fuck. Well, I'm moving in front, grabbing it. Uh, Yoink! I don't grab things that random people throw at me. What? <laughs> Who are you? Luna like starts to stand up and then remembers, "Fuck, there's a child right yeah, here, okay. and I can't wake her up." So I'm just Renee's glaring. just like grabs it and like looks over at him like. That's the price I pay. That is the price I pay. 
Every single time you lie, looking at Nathaniel, looking at the fire, you are adding debt to the universe and you will pay it back and there will always be collateral. That right there in your hand, Renee, is the first time I ever paid the debt of lion and I never did it again. And the collateral, Samuel loses his eye. Hmm. You lost control of your life and wanted there to be structure to it. Something that would avoid it from happening again because it was so terrifying. And you imposed That's that not the logic. The logic is, is that we are now sitting at the precipice where we are not above the law. We are not below it. We're walking a thin line. Your lies have cost us the tactical advantage of surprise. To which now so. the Black Vane Queen knows that we are coming. The Wouldn't best thing we could have known we were coming when we came down there in the first place. She, as far as anybody could have been known, we were just a bunch of group of adventurers saving a little girl from a local that's, disaster. That still can be all we are. You're not seeing the bigger picture here. We didn't go in and announce ourselves as going after the spine. We went in, we talked our way to get close enough to the enemy, we started a fight, some got away, some didn't. In a sense, you're both right. We didn't announce ourselves. At Finally, least something we can agree on. We didn't announce ourselves, at least not properly. We could have been adventurers if it were, or simply adventurers, if it weren't for me. But not because we didn't go in there stealthily. It was because I wear the brandings of the Witch Taker Wizard on my back. I am a giant yellow target. Whether he knew who I was initially or not, as soon as he goes to her and says that a man in a yellow hat came in and took all of his men, then he is going to know, or then she is going to know, who it is that she's dealing with. Uh, Joe, I actually wanted to see if I could remember something. This kind of was happening all step by step. <laughs> um, I know that this might be a hard thing, high DC, but I still want to try it. Did, when Bloodstride figured it out, did it seem, because I know he was staring at me and then st started smiling. I want to know, did he seem like he figured out that we were just adventurers or did he that was the recognition like oh yeah this that is, is going to require i would say a fairly high insight since you're recalling this information of what you can tell from uh from the facial right. features from purely his mouth and his mm -hmm. minimal gestures yeah yeah i know this is gonna be a high one but i'll try it anyway try it Perfect. make the Thanks. attempt Nice to, be, nice to be nice to be 18? That's an 18! You try to put yourself in the shoes of someone who didn't want to be found. Uh, someone who's maybe part of the spine of death. Perhaps he sees you as not as much of a threat. Perhaps he may f think as though if you were random adventurers, that you were just making up a lie to continue your adventure. Perhaps he might be someone who believes you're not much of a threat at all, as uh, he seemed to walk casually out of there, just like any other day. I don't tell them that part. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that, but well, I no, yeah, no, when, when you guys when you guys were in the sewer, yeah. when you guys were in the sewer, oh, yeah. oh yeah. 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 yeah, I I I haven't told anybody here no, no, no. about you. You no, didn't have the of our conversation. I do have a continuation though. Furthermore, I believe that she was most likely going to know about all of us. Renee has a criminal record. You have a metal arm oh, and goodness. assuredly have a past that you haven't told us. And Luna, I didn't expect to have a history or a title behind her, but you do. It is actually very easy to get information, and if she has a reach this far or this close to Belkinus, I can't believe that she won't have any reach inside of the city. I probably should mention that, yeah, I, I have to agree, because remember when I mentioned that my father's tomb was desecrated, I have reason to believe that it was the spine who was behind it. So even Which, if she didn't know my face, as soon as she heard my name, she was going to know. Which means that postulating over what we did and didn't do wrong is the wrong move to take. 
Renee will hand back um, what Enoch threw, or basically like have her hand out with it just to see if I'll take it. See the attaching little pieces that make up the nub and he just jams it back in and you can see the arm begin to move. And she just gives him this very like pointed stare and just says, if you really wanted to have the tactical advantage of surprise, we would have never gone down there. We would have never saved that girl. We would have kept on going on our way and made advantage of our time. But fortunately, it seems that at the very least you have some sort of heart in there. I don't know if it's metal or not, but if you want to have a better tactical advantage, other than surprise, then we communicate what we are capable of. That way, we can all go into this and actually rely, rely on one another. While you may steps... not like it, Nathaniel is very good at lying. He is very good at we getting into places that we might not necessarily be able to at the beginning. Luna apparently is very good with her sword. You are good with a gun and apparently flying. I... Which, if you would like to have that conversation, I would very much appreciate knowing what we, you are bringing to the table. <sighs> to start with, I believe that we could have done both. But I will have to concede to Nathaniel that there's no point in pointing out what we did wrong and what we did right. Have it so your you're way. going to trust him? Oh, hell no. Trust is... <laughs> Trust is that's vital a, that's to work a... with each other. If we can't Being trust a good each other, team... at the very least, on a ba at least on a battlefield, if we can't have some semblance of trust within each other, we're going to crumble. You don't have to... I agree with you. This is me not disagreeing with you. I agree with you. But trust as a person? We're off to a very rocky start. As he... We'll step over to the fire and... So what do you all want to know? Well, what do you do? See, I machine things. I, I can make things. Uh, mostly firearms at the moment. My experimentation with trying to infuse magic and machinery is a very long and arduous process. But I am getting closer to that breakthrough. As per what I am, I am as human as one can be. Just giving you a look. <laughs> Very, the kind of similar thing. Renee's also kind of giving a look of like, uh-huh. <laughs> At this point, I am uh, beginning to lay down so that I can go to sleep. Listen, uh, I'm not going to press whatever the hell you are. I think I understand what you are, but I'm not going to press it. Well, I know what you are. Well, You're yeah. as human as you can be, too. Mostly. Albeit a little bit luckier than I, but... I don't think... I think we're from backgrounds that are a little too different to be making comparisons. <laughs> I've simply told you the good things. And I've done nothing but tell you all the truth. As mm. far as I'm allowed to. I'm going to try and get some sleep. Renee, did, I'm sorry, Renee, did you have anything else you wanted to say? No, if you're going to sleep... By all means, go to sleep. Um, I will take a first watch. And she like looks over at Enoch, has a very like gentle smile on her face as she says, I would very much like if you did not aim a gun at my friend again, because if you do, it will not be very- As long as we burn the book. <sighs> oh, absolutely not. I stare up at the night sky. <laughs> If you want to carry around bad juju, that's all you. I... It is evidence of the case. Unlike you, with your... An unofficial case that will never make it to the courts. All right, all right. Enough. This is not an argument. The book is staying with me. Enough. Renee, wake me up when your watch is done. I'll take the next one. And she nods. We'll probably play, like, a little bit on her loot. Just very lightly. Nice. Okay. Renee, you may take the first watch 
Actually, All right. uh, yeah, you may take the first watch. You can give me a perception or okay. survival of your choice. I, they're the same. Okay, okay. I say as I get like absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see the odd uh, carriage guard or random person pass you by along the road that is quite a few yards away. It's like a, it's like a short jog, but it's a little bit off. Um, but otherwise a mostly uneventful night so far. And you wake up Luna, who you may take your watch as well. The elf girl is still fast asleep with a thumb in her mouth and clutching at nothing, kind of just at the grass. I'm just gonna, I imagine I've like put a blanket over her as we've, uh, like, or my coat, because I forgot I have one, because I didn't want it in the art. Uh, I've like While, wrapped her up in my coat. Yeah. While they're changing shifts, Renee can also be like, I can uh, keep your company if, while you take watch if you would like. I don't want to move her. Fair enough. It's all right. Don't worry, get some rest. She will. Okay, uh, and you, oh, uh, something yeah. else? Oh, no, no, no. No. <laughs> you <laughs> may make I, your perception or survival check. Yes, yes, I was gonna say something and then my brain shut off, so I'm just gonna assume it wasn't important. Not to oh. <laughs> Hey, I did it. Hey. Perfect oh. view of nothing. Perfect view of oh. absolutely fuck all. But I'm so comforting to this child. <laughs> <laughs> you peer just at the landscape. You can see, you know, as far as the city, you see the Capitol building that scrapes the sky with airships still parked. You see a few more um, people pass you by just throughout the night. Every, like, 30 or 40 minutes or so, someone passes. And one person seems to set up camp a little bit distance from you. A single person. Can't quite tell from this distance, make out any features or anything, but they seem to have some kind of large pack. But uh, otherwise, another un uneventful night. Or Seems another uneventful few hours, rather. Seems pretty normal. I'm not too worried. Um, I guess I'll I gotta wake someone up for next watch, huh? Uh, Enoch, uh, Luna will kind of <laughs> shake your shoulder. Uh, See as he's sleeping on the ground, you know that classical cowboy hat over the face kind of deal? Yeah, no, if <laughs> just, that's what you do, yeah. I just I just flick the hat. I, I like, uh, playfully, mind you, bap the, the, the hat off your head. Enoch. Relax, buddy. It's your turn. Relax, buddy. As he gets up. Uh, by the way, when he does get up, his arm falls off because he was unconscious. <laughs> ah, shit, not again. Well, this is a thing. <laughs> yeah, so, so if your character is unconscious, the arm automatically detaches. So if Enoch ever goes to sleep or hits zero, his arm detaches. Why are nice. you the fantasy embodiment of arm fall off, man? <laughs> <laughs> he forgot to take it off before he went to bed. <laughs> well, God. Uh, have a safe watch. There's a person that set up camp a bit further down, but they seem to be normal people head to and from balconies all the time. Just something to keep an eye out for. Mm. And you're the last person on watch. Uh, and I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> all right. Not enough. Okay, Enoch, you may give me a survival or perception of your choice. Uh, assuming my perception is a lot better than my survival. It is. Huh? Okay. 21. You see 21. mostly the same, like people going 21. in and out. Uh, and you take note of the figure that Luna mentioned, that they, they seem to rustle around like in their sleeping bag, pack up, and then go seems they were unable to <laughs> deal with living in the wilds um the best part of waking up but <laughs> however they seem to stop on the main road and set up camp in the middle of the road and any odd person here and there 
just kind of goes around them. And uh, otherwise, the rest of your night goes uneventful. And you guys finish a long rest. It is two out of 14 days in your travel to Cloveway. You guys wake up. Um, it, you know, it is a bright, sunny day. The clouds have parted. And, you know, uh, so let me just see. Gonna start attending to the child, making sure she's not uh, hungry or uh, thirsty. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, when you tend to Eliza, um, she seems Eliza. to be doing well. She, she wakes <laughs> up uh, about, uh, actually, no, she is still asleep. She is exhausted. Mm. Baby. Um, I'm going to let her sleep for as long as possible, but eventually I will kind of gently shake her shoulder. Mm-hmm. Eliza, dear? No. She, she kind of turns and grasps, like, almost her entire body, like, wrap around your arm. Oh, no. Baby. I'm, come on, dear. got to wake up so we can find your mummy. Mm, she rubs her eye awake. Okay. I know. You don't have to walk. I'll carry you. Hmm. Can I get on your back? Sure, sure, of course. <laughs> she smiles. I, I, I like put her up on my shoulders, <laughs> <laughs> like, like super tall. <laughs> she kind of, she kind of gently, very gently bounces up and down a little bit with her hands, <laughs> kind of like bracing herself on your shoulders, pushing herself up and down. Mm-hmm. Figured from up there, you might be able to see the woods you grew up near. Hmm. She puts a finger on her lip. I I think it was that way. And she points towards the woods, like almost straight east. Perfection. What? Well? But uh, what else is everybody doing this morning? Yeah, yeah. Uh, general maintenance. General maintenance. Okay. Yeah. You need to make sure that this thing doesn't uh. Explode! <laughs> Luckily, the morning dew has not rusted up any of your parts, so that's good. It's stainless steel, baby. Oh, nice. Uh, Lene is just kind of like getting ready for the day, just kind of like running her hands through her hair, just making sure that like she looks relatively presentable. It's hard to do when you're traveling, but mm-hmm. she makes do. Girls got to make do. I stand up and I am ready for the day. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Listen, we can't all be as as naturally beautiful as you are. Beautiful. Mm. Well, mm. no. anyway, well, it would help woods. if you didn't wear something. So, um, yellow. <laughs> I keep on telling you. I like. I very calmly clean my glasses and then put them back on. <laughs> are we ought to go through the woods. Yes, if we, if, uh, if we all to go through the woods on Sheldon, many people would get to see where you are. I mean, look at your hand. Like, she kind of like almost wants to reach out for the hat, but she kind of like doesn't. It's kind of like the, the way of like she wants to grab it, but she won't. It's like, yeah. it's just... <laughs> I don't flinch. Very fluorescent. <laughs> yes. Yes. It is really... Listen, I have tried so many different times and just... I, I can't get into change. Well, maybe he... I do... I mean, I don't Sorry. think anybody can pull off the rainbow like you do, Renee. She just shrugs. Well, sorry. What were you going to say, Debbie? Oh, I was I was just going to say that I give no reaction to these compliments. I am too beyond this thoughtage. And then we move back. She's taking his hat and putting it on. <laughs> are, you, are you trying to take the hat? I was trying to take the hat. Don't touch. All right. Listen, listen, that's an offense. <laughs> to, to if you me, try to take the hat, to the only then will I move. <laughs> yes. She got, she's just kind of like, gives a little bit of like a playful, almost like mischievous smile of like, ah, I got you to move. That, that's offensive to every man that has a hat. You don't touch a man's hat. This is an official <laughs> uniform. You are not at liberty to take it. Mm. He just Eliza. stares at his face, waiting for something, so, some sort of other reaction other than just a statement after not getting it. <sighs> Eliza Bye. is enjoying herself and giggling at the cacophony that is going on. <laughs> Good. <laughs> While I have her leg like, up on my shoulder, uh, is the wound on her leg just completely scarred and healed? Yep, she... it is scarred over. It It is not as bad a scar as it was yesterday, but from what you can 
tell, it seems like this is as good as it's going to get. But it doesn't look like it's going to be a permanently debilitating injury. No. Okay, good. Hmm. Are you... Uh, I'm going to approach the child. And do you know how long it will take for us to reach your village? She looks around and puts a finger on her lip. Uh, hmm. I think I know. And she, her eyes go wide. <gasps> that tree! That one oh. over there! And she points. Uh, it's a little bit off in the distance. Yes? Is that close to your home? Mm -hmm. She, like, nods her head very enthusiastically. Good. Wonderful, wonderful. Good eyes. Well, very good. we should probably be off, stamp out the fire, get this girl's... Her mom's probably worried sick. I'm... Uh, I am going to, like, glance over to Renee for a moment, then back to the child. Uh, you have been very brave so far. And for your bravery, just for a little while, I would like you to hold on to this. And then I take off my hat and put it on the child. Oh! <gasps> oh! Renee just looks like betrayed, but also is so happy, but also like, Luna will, oh! Luna will kneel down a little bit to make it easier for you to put it on her head because she's currently like sitting up she, on my shoulders. She reaches out her hands and makes like grasping motions with her fingers. Like, like half of her head disappears <laughs> yeah. in the very wide brim, and she has to oh, she has I'm to jealous. hold it up a little bit to make sure that it doesn't eat her face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she is she is now the witch taker wizard. It's decided. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! She's yes. got a big like, smile on her face, and you know what, Nathaniel, she, go ahead and you 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 get an inspiration for that. Yay! Fantastic! She's gained yay. my title, which means she's also gained my enemies. <laughs> All right, oh my let's god, go. Renee just looks See, so like, this, betrayed. Doesn't that suit you, dear? <laughs> seeing this, uh, Enoch's just gonna whistle a, uh, a familiar tune. Just this is as happy as it can get for this moment. All right, and you guys start this. to follow her directions, I presume, as yep. she holds her her hat to the brim as if she is captain of a ship. <laughs> she directs you from tree to tree, each one having a little mark like a of like either a, a letter in Elven, if any of you guys recognize Elven. Yes, hello. Yes, you half elf oh. raises hand. You recognize yep. that she writes her uh name in Elven on a lot of trees and like a no. little she likes to draw a little oh. sun right underneath it. Aww. Oh. And along the path, you guys uh come across someone who's just kind of rummaging a, a fur-covered humanoid who's rummaging through a massive bag, nearly the, the person's size. They seem to be muttering things to themselves as they toss out various objects and junk onto the grass. Uh, what does this oh. human look like besides covered in fur? Uh, you take a closer look and uh, they seem to be a tabaxi with very splotchy, unkempt fur. You can't quite see his face. Uh, you can see that some of his arms and legs are covered in scars, and he's fairly lanky. Uh, he is dressed in just thrown-together robes and rags, something that looks like it was part of an awning. And there is a walking stick, like, jabbed into the dirt, and uh, it's a very long walking stick, near, like, a little bit taller than he is, and at the tip hangs a little lantern. He's like tossing things be like behind him. They throw it to the ground. Where is it? Renee will kind of like look at everybody and be like, uh, "May I? Should we? Uh, I'll I'll like. I think I think you should. He's obviously in some trouble." Yeah, I'm gonna stay back here with Eliza. That's what I thought. All right. I will stick with you on that. I'm gonna let the the two talkers talk. I won't Thank see this you. happen. <laughs> and Renee will walk up. Um, uh, hello? You you say to him, his ears perk up, he pulls himself out as if he j was just s snorkeling out of his bag, out of his bag, hmm? and his ears perk up. Oh, finally, customers! Oh. And he turns his head. You can see that uh, his, his he's got just as unkempt fur and scars on his face, uh, twisty whiskers and a glass eye that seems to laze down towards his cheek. <laughs> without, without my hat to stop them, 
Without my hat to stop them, my eyebrows raise all the way off of my head. You just became long dog. Good job. Um, I am so sorry. Uh, uh, no, no, no worries. Uh, here, here, here. And he, he just like throws down his bag and a bunch of contents just fall and neatly seem to walk into place in rows oh. by themselves. And he takes a seat cross-legged and he extends an arm up to you. Oh my god, yes, Art! Oh. Oh god. <laughs> what? He extends oh an arm god. up to you, oh. Renee. Name's No Tail of No Tail Traveling him. Emporium, the best mobile store in all of Elkness. What can I do for you? Oh I, my love god, him. I love him. I love oh him. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Renee will take No Tail's hand um, and just say, um, "Hello, I am uh, Renee. It's very nice to meet you." Ooh, uh, thank Mr. you, Lothair. Renee. It's nice to meet you too. And you lot, you want to buy something? And when uh, you when you shake yes. his hand, you can you can feel his fur is very dirty and unkempt. Hmm, Sir, I'm gonna I'll wash my hands off your whole stock. Ooh, if what? you can afford it. <laughs> I would love to. I'm, what I'm kidding, of course. Is in your stock? Oh, take a look. Stock. And he gestures over, and you guys can see No Tails' stock. Ooh. Oh, shit. It's an actual list. It's uh, an actual list whoa, of there's stuff. Gold. Give me a sec. <gasps> He's got wine. He does, oh. yeah. So, do so the paper image is his special items, and then he's got more general goods listed below. You know, just goods that you can find anywhere. But his special I love stock that. includes the Rod of Entanglement, a Dinner Bell, Ruined Wicker Belt, Heavy Arrows. You can you can read it all. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a stick of stickiness. <laughs> <laughs> it is a stick of stickiness. Oh my gosh. Uh, Renee. Yes. I give you two gold, and can you grab me a bottle of wine, please? Oh, I was planning on getting one myself. We can just get two. Yeah. Oh, there's more. I, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll toss I was just two at coins at Renee. Yeah. yeah, if you if you scroll down, you can see more general goods that he has. That's all I want. That are you know self-explanatory. I know. I'm just staring at sitting there going gold, 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 gold. Like or mm. like uh, the. Oh my gosh. And do we have a chef amongst us? I know how to cook things to where it won't kill you. I know how Indeed. to make a mean goulash. I mm. suppose you would need cook's utensils if you do not already have them. Might be handy. I'm used to just roasting things on a fire. Very so well. So that would be full five gold. Yes. So what we want to get initially. Um, what is this, uh, Ben? Oh, that thing. You know, someone sold that to me. Say there was some kind of powerful kind of wear that enhanced their abilities. Ah, it just seems like a rusty old belt to me. Hmm. Maybe someone could fix it. Or maybe I got swindled. Ooh, I'm gonna get that boy if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love this. I fucking love how this many, man! How many of these sticks do you have? The oh, just the one! That is a legendary artifact. There's no more like it. Understood. Renee, your eyes, please. Ah, yes. And so oh, she will combine. go over and she will cast uh, Detect Magic. Okay. We need to combine the stick of stickiness with the rock with the googly eyes. So let me just... For the ultimate weapon. Yes! <laughs> is this simply a stick? <laughs> yes. You do detect magic on the stick and the wicker belt. However, it's very, very faint. You detect... Uh, uh, enchantment on the wicker belt and on the stick of stickiness you detect let me make sure that it's the right one necromancy no. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to be necromancy <laughs> if it is I'm going to go feral <laughs> no he probably doesn't know what he's just a random dude that has a stick <laughs> he's too attached to the stick very, a very sticky stick <laughs> gosh Oh, this is going to be transmutation. <clears throat> this is going to be, a, oh my god, it's a wand of webs. <laughs> I, I was thinking a stick of grease, but you know. <laughs> no, it is a transmutation. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh my god, it's a wand of webs. Oh my god, okay. 
Uh, God. She just will I, very like she'll she'll move back into like, whisper to Nathaniel what it is like what kind of magic. Hmm. Uh, I will take your wicker belt and your stick. Ooh, of course. And he he tells you the price, which is six gold pieces. Also, the ring of certainty. You can see there's divination on that. Oh. I really want that. Renee is just, she's, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough Mm. money. I'm so sick. But yes, you may add the ruined wicker belt and the stick of stickiness to your inventory at the cost of six gold pieces. I'm going to borrow red wine to my inventory. You most certainly can for two gold. I'm I'm going to pay for that. Oh, okay, sweet. Joe, dare I to ask to see if the church gave me any money? Well, you should have gotten money from your background, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I never rolled for that. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. It's not, it's not a your back not a you're it's like cost. Yeah, yeah, no, your background just gives you an amount. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let It'll me see. Check your D&D Beyond. When you put your equipment in, you should have also gotten gold. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed that this uh, is a wand of webs. I also pay for a bottle of wine, and I'll also get the cook's utensils for whoever was going to get it. Because it's only I one mean, gold. It's going to be useful. Also, I got paid you. 30, like... I guess we should split the thirty to fifteen, huh? If we have the pri- if we have the gold for it, we might also want to get the rod of entanglement. Not that my skills in capture er, in apprehending criminals are any worse off for it, but if in the case that I'm not around or that I am out of magic, well, don't forget mm. we still have those crystals. Right, but those are for blue. the one uh, person. I'm just saying we still have them. Just don't forget that we have those. Um. I can buy the uh, god if we need to. Yes. If you'd like. Mm. I think I think that I am happy with my purchase as I hold up the stick. As am uh, I. As I'm putting that bottle of wine away. <laughs> <laughs> uh Monsieur uh Notel. Mm-hmm. Which direction are you headed? Oh I'm just looking for people. Oh okay. trusty adventure like you could always use some special items, I know. Going on all your journeys. Oh, but of course, but of course. Um, I think that for now we might be good on our purchases, but if we ever see you again, I'm sure that we'll be buying much more. Mm, I sure do hope so. And he claps his hands, and uh, all the items start to, like, bounce and move and travel all back into his pack. And he has That's a very so satisfied cool. smile. He, he smiles... <laughs> Uh, bears his teeth to you. You can see a lot of it's missing. Uh, no. If you're looking, if you're looking oh. to sell to people traveling, uh, there's quite a few people camping along the main road. He snaps his fingers. Yeah, that's why I came to Belkinus. I'm not from around here. See, is that trade festival still going on? Uh, <laughs> trading oh. district. The trading district could look better. Mm. I would. They're not letting anyone in in or out no, of the main don't. city right now. But there's plenty of people no. camped about. So I'm sure that they. <clears throat> appreciate uh, wine and tools for sale since it seems like they're going to be there for a while. If you just go closer to the the, the walls, you'll probably see people. He snaps uh, to his finger. To be more accurate, the... Go on. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, well, to be more accurate, the trading district's a little, um... There fucked. Was there was an attack yeah. on the, tra- on the uh, uh, trade uh, district a few days ago. It's all kind uh, of uh, ruins right now. He starts, uh, uh, and she is right. There is there is a bunch of people outside the walls that could definitely be buying up whatever you got. Good business right now. Mm, he he rubs his hands together. That's a damn shame, but it does mean a lot of rich folk like to step in and help. And I think they could definitely help me. And he kind of uh, pulls his chinny kind of beardy fur. Well, thank y'all for the heads up. And uh, he lifts his pack very gently, like, as if tugging it. You can see it's not moving at all, but then it slowly starts to lift up and approach and levitate behind his back. Oh! He gives you a Oh my god, he's like the Lorax! (laughs) (laughs) He he gives you a two-finger salute. I do hope to see y'all again. (laughs) And he starts to walk with his walking stick as his backpack slowly levitates behind his back. I do. I, know, so I, I, I think that that is the most beautifulest man I've ever seen. And as he approaches, he stops at uh, at you, uh, Luna, and notices the little girl on your shoulder. Ooh, hello, 
I have something very special for you, little girl. He puts two. Luna like has a puts like a hand like. She's like more protectively holding on to like the girl's legs. Yeah, she's, uh, the girl, like, shoulder, the girl like, starts to. Yeah, Eliza kind of like hides behind you a little, like your head a little bit. Use the hat. <laughs> Use the hat, hat, child. Uh, um, what do you intend to give her? Oh, just a fun little thing. And he he puts two fingers in his mouth and he whistles, which I cannot do. And out from his sleeve <laughs> crawls out what looks to be like overgrowth vine, you know, like like that tends to grow along uh-huh. like poles and stuff. And it seems mm-hmm. to like walk and it comes up to the back of his hand and he holds it up to the little girl. What's that? Oh, that's my little buddy, Twiggy. Does it look safe? Does it look dangerous? Uh, you can give me a survival or a... um. What is the plant thing? Is there a plant thing? Nature. Uh, nature. That would be nature. Nature or nature. arcana, if you so wish. Oh, well, that's a 13. Twiggy. It would have been a same, same thing with arcana. So. This is uh, detect magic. Uh, you do not detect magic on this. You, uh, Luna... Oh, wait, no, that was your previous detect magic. The, the chat was going weird in roll 20. Though, though oh. um, with uh, detect magic being up to 10 minutes... But yeah, it is up to 10 minutes. That is true, yes. So you don't detect magic on this. Luna, with a 13, you know that this is some kind of small creature. That it is, <gasps> it is pretty harmless. That it tends to group up in... You don't recall the name. But these things, if they ever feel threatened, they tend to run away most of the time. But they sometimes can make very cute little companions. Well, would you look at that? Liza, and, it's safe, I promise. Mm. Hey, yo, get stick bugged. <laughs> I hate it here. She, <laughs> she extends her hand, and this vine-like creature kind of jumps up and like wraps around her finger like a, like a ring and mm-hmm. grows almost instantly a, just like one singular leaf. Aww. And No Tail gives a little smile. Mm, and bows. I hope to see y'all again. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, b- be safe on the road. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm still that watching man just this, give- this leaf. <laughs> <laughs> the leaf. Uh, Eliza goes to like sniff at the leaf, and it starts to tickle her nose, and she. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, bless you. <laughs> and she like starts to wave her hand around, like. Shh, almost like flying it through the sky <laughs> and the leaf splits in two and starts to like flap with her oh looks like you've made a new friend little one let's get you back home now shall we all right i'll uh, start going along the path okay you continue Renee will, like rub the dirt off the f- like from the the fur on like one of the nearest trees just eh, eh, eh. You- oh. <laughs> yes uh, i want uh j- before or is it not before uh, I want a uh, Grick Grickyak versus No Tail stands in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yes. Oh yes. God! Don't pit them against hey, each yo, other. Hey, Grickyak please. is my homeboy. How dare you? No Tail is amazing and beautiful. Can I? Can I be for both of them? Grickyak was can, honest. Yes. No, you in have this, to pick a side. No, no, pick a in side. this hand, we in this house we don't pick, pick sides. Pick a side. Pick a side. <laughs> I stand them both. I stand them both, and I love them both. Okay. But yes. Sorry. Yes. Anyway, you continue to follow Eliza's directions, going from tree to tree, rock to rock, seeing her signature carving here and there, until eventually you arrive. You you reach a small cottage bordering the woods. So you're not in the woods yet. You're about here on the map. Hold on, the grid's on. Let me turn that off. Mm-hmm. You arrive about here, about the center of the hexagon, and it's still mm-hmm. kind of late morning, and you arrive a singular, humble little cottage bordering the woods, like almost like the woods are its backyard, and out on the front, sh- front porch sits a short-bearded humanoid. It's a dwarf. And Eliza starts to get very antsy and is like looking around to get down from you. Yeah. Now, as soon as she does, I I, I take her down. All right, little one. 
You let her go, and she immediately starts booking it towards the house and drops the hat on the way. Oh. oh. I'm going to follow up after her just so I can explain to any guardian what happened. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick up the hat and give it back to Nathaniel. Uh, absolutely not. I will I will oh, walk forward mind. and swoop up my hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> never mind. Parental emotion just makes whoop. me queasy. I must just stay back here. <laughs> Uh, Why does I will that also, not surprise me? I, I will go with, not so that I can speak, but just so that I can listen. Mm -hmm. All right. And you uh, see as she runs and she starts to make headway, the dwarf notices and she starts to run as well. And they meet halfway and they collide in a strong embrace. I'm not crying. And you can see <laughs> the, the dwarf has tears in her eyes as she is holding Eliza tight, shifting her left and right, side to side. Oh, Eliza, my girl! I thought I lost you. I'm just coming up quietly, letting them have their moment. She she showers Eliza with kisses, and Eliza is just, like, hugging her and burying her face in this dwarf's chest and... After they have a moment together, she notices you all. Oh, thank you. Thank you for bringing my girl <coughs> back to me. And she goes and, like, just grabs at your hand, Luna, and just, just holds it real tight, shaking it and looking to all of you. Thank you so much. Luna will kneel down a bit um, because, again, tall, tall lady. Uh, mm -hmm. She'll kneel down a bit. There's no reason to thank us, really. We just did the right thing. Your daughter was very brave. You should be very proud of her. Oh, I am. Did you find your way home? Did you leave them here, my sweet girl? She did. She did. All by herself. She's a very smart assistant with uh, all her little markings. You taught her very well. You should be very proud. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, your leg. Here, here. I'll, I'll go tend to it. Here, come on. All of you. All of you. You must come for some food. I just made some lunch, and it's the least I can do. Please, 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 come. Sure, sure. We can't there. stay very long, though. Oh. Right, we do have to be getting on the road, As but I'd at, ver I at the very least like to explain to you what happened. Yes, please, please. And no worries. You can stay as long as you want. And she starts to, she goes and, like, grabs Eliza's hand. You can sh see she's only a head taller. And um, they they kind of hold hands and swinging back and forth on the way back to the cottage. Oh my god, my heart! <laughs> Renee has a little bit of like a sad <laughs> smile, and like going into my, the house might be fidgeting a little bit. My face betrays no emotion. As of course it does. House. Uh, yeah, Renee, would you say you're being obvious enough that I wouldn't have to roll perception to see that, or? Um, I mean, I said it out loud, so yeah, no, I I wouldn't make you roll. Yeah. Lynn is going to look back at you and she's just going to kind of almost like a look of reassurance, you know, just like a comfort, general comfort to, to her. You look anxious and she's going to pat your shoulder. You don't have to come inside if you don't want to. No, I don't. I would be fine. Thank you. Like, uh, see, they kind of like threw her off a little bit. She kind of like straightens back up, just takes a breath, <laughs> like puts on her little like, persona again and walks in. Alright. And, uh, she will, I will uh, walk in after her. I'm not looking back at the others, so. Mm -hmm. Boys, you going in or no? Oh, I said I was going in. Oh, you're going in? Oh. Enoch, are you just going to stay nah, on the front I'm, porch? <clears throat> no, I'm staying on the far side of this little gated area if there is a gate. Uh, well, it's, it's just kind of like a plains and just like a few trees here and there just open open land at least 30 feet away all right yep you were standoffish <laughs> at least 30 feet away and so it, though it's uh, looking at parents kinds of it breaks his heart so you guys uh head in and you can see that this place looks uh makeshift uh you know crafted not by uh any sort of business or anything that it looked hand put together but sturdy you can see various knickknacks uh, and various different colors of wood. 
uh, kind of <laughs> ununiformly put all along the walls. And you can see that when you walk inside, you can see that Eliza is hugging a uh, very young human boy with uh, very long, curly black hair down to his shoulders. And they are holding each other and crying. Oh, I'm assuming this is her brother then. You, she mentioned him to me before. The, the dwarf uh, speaks up. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, by the way, my name's Heliois. Heliois? Very nice to meet you. My name is Luna. And, uh, these are my companions who are free to introduce themselves. Oh, oh, Enoch's not in here. Well, our friend outside, he's Enoch, but, uh... Renee will, will reach out her hand. Uh, Renee, but it's a, it is a pleasure. She takes it and she shakes it firmly. She's got a strong grip. And she will smile, then, like, uh, Nice to meet and... you. Mm -hmm. And you, sir. And she'll turn and gesture. Yeah. Nathaniel Gainsby, which take a wizard of Belkinus. And I nod down. Ooh, you're from the city. Yes. I have a few questions, if that is all right. Oh, uh, of course, but uh, let me go prepare the meal uh, before it gets cold. <laughs> of course. And she heads yeah. on into the what you presume to be the kitchen. While she does this, I'd like to uh, kind of... Kind of like the same kind of same thing I was doing to it, to keep um, uh, Eliza entertained um, before, like playing with her, making little light sparks because I have the light can strip, can trip, mm. but also with her brother, you, you know, entertaining the kids. <laughs> you the sparks. Uh, Eliza seems uh, very taken by them, but uh, the boy who introduces himself, my name's Edmund. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Edmund. Thanks for bringing my sister back. Of course, of course. And I couldn't leave her all alone out there now, could I? While you're doing the lights thing, he like quickly seems to get an idea, runs into another room, and comes back and seems to have a wood carved dragon, and starts to fly, f hold it, fly it around the <laughs> dancing lights. <laughs> rah, rah. Oh my god, I love this. Yes, I am continuing. <laughs> <laughs> And as you do play for a little bit, uh, you guys take in the, the more of this house, and you can see that it's decorated with a lot of knickknacks, and you see a very notable painting on the wall. A painting that looks like it's got Chandrell and two other women on it. Cammy dropped. Oh, Cammy dropped. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Oh, Cammy. Oh, no, we will we wait for Cammy. Cammy. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, uh, that noted, Joe... Could I just make a general perception check just to double check that everything is okay? Yes, you may. Just looking in the meantime. all around, watching, taking, uh, taking watch. Yes, yes. Okay. Seventeen. Looking around. See, look at that. And listening, since it wasn't too far off, you can hear the distant voice of No Tail shouting about, "Oh boy, more customers!" Just like off in the distance. And you do hear a little bit of what's going on inside the like raw dragon and you know some laughing and giggling going on as well. And from the woods, you hear very subtle howling. Oh no, tail. And then I pulled out my gun. Oh no, tail. <laughs> oh my god. Wolves are about to attack him, and I just bought the only thing oh, that no. would stop he, them, he the stick. He didn't go into the woods. He he went towards the, the wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's fine. All right. Or is he? Uh, <clears throat> hearing that sound, I pull out my gun, and of course it's in the down position, meaning... And I pull I'm, out my gun. <laughs> and then I pull out my gun! Anyways. Uh... <laughs> I looked at you, looked at me. You do know uh, that it was very then, distant in the woods. It wasn't close by. Yeah. Well, then I, I, I wouldn't have pulled it out if it's like, if it's close. Yes. If it's far. No, it, it's more like an as echo. wary as possible. It's more like an echo okay. that has gone through the woods. Uh, just wolves communicating. All right, that's fine. Hello, I'm so he sorry. Is, okay, I'm I'm sorry. Like that, I'm. I feel like I'm like prioritizing the wrong thing, but you're okay. You're just without internet. I'm Is fine. your recording still going? 
No, this the recording is still going. And the thing is, okay, I just good. got my internet back. I just hopped. I was trying oh. to see if I could get back one more time, and it worked. So rad, I'm fine. Rad, rad, Okay, awesome. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Sorry, so sorry about that. So yes, uh, as I was saying, you guys looking around, you see the knickknacks, and you particularly see a painting, uh, a painting with the Viscount Chandrel Miharian on it, <gasps> along with two Ooh. other women beside her. Now, oh. Um, <laughs> Heloise went into her kitchen, yeah? Yes. Is, there a, is it like an open floor plan where you can see into the kitchen, or is it is there a door? It's open. Um, Heloise? Um, Hi. I see you have a painting of the Viscount. Who, who, else is, who else is with her? Oh, those! And I can show you a close-up of the... Yes! <gasps> yes! yes! More, right. Show And it. this is what you see... Oh my oh god, my it's adorable god. stuff. Oh my god. You see, Wait. you see. Th- I don't see this. No, you don't. You see three elven women. Uh, w- one of them, very clearly Chandrell on the left. Uh, oh. Another elf on the very right. They all have very similar facial features. The one on the right has kind of redder hair with, up done with a ponytail. And the one in the center has very scruffed kind of dirty blonde hair with notably, you know, one of her ears has been cut. Oh. And you can notice that it is a little bit shorter. Oh, those. I wonder if the one wearing... Oh, yeah, you're buffering. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say, I wonder if the one that's wearing black with the stern look is the bad guy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder which one of these. So, those are the Maharian sisters. You know of Chantrell, yeah? Uh, yes, yes, we do. Um, who are the other two, though? I... Oh, I recognize them. Well, the one on the right there, that's Kara. We haven't really heard from her for a long time since the war ended. It's a damn shame. And the center one, well, that's Abigail. And I wouldn't be surprised if you hadn't heard of Abigail. She died in the war. Aye, oh, that's horrible. Aye. My father fought in the war. Oh, did he? He never really told me many... He didn't tell me too many stories there. Oh, you he probably wouldn't have heard of the Maharian sisters back then. They were just normal soldiers as well. No, no. My... And I don't... I, My father was much closer to the front lines. I don't know where they were, but... Hmm. Oh, I don't know much for sure either. But my father also was in the war. He's... Pretty. He set up a shop up in Chester City, but uh, he had a run-in with the sisters. What's your father's name? I I frequent Chester City quite a bit. Ah, his name is Unlem. Uh, Does that name mean anything to me? Um, do you know Dwarven? No, I don't. Then... Mm, well, it's I, a cool I, name. <laughs> oh, oh, recalling like history about what your dad like history, would know. Yeah, do I, I, do I do, or or have I? Well, she said familiar. he set up. She said he set up shop, shop in Chester City. I take a lot of jobs in Chester City. That is true. Okay, you can hmm. Roll me just a straight d twenty. Let me see. Uh, Let's see. One d twenty. That's a twenty nine, not a twenty. Come on. There we go. Hearing about the war always makes Ten. Renee kind of like fidget a little bit. Okay. Not like horribly, but just... Mm, You've perhaps mm-hmm. come across his shop every now and then. You've never took taken note of it, but you maybe recognize that name. Uh, do I recognize... Have I... So I don't know what he sells. I just know I've probably passed by a building that had a sign that... With his name on it, yes. I... You know, I, I might be crazy, but I... I think I may have passed by that shop a few times. Shop oh, with that name on it, at least. Oh, wonderful. In, if you ever travel up there again, please pay him a visit. Oh, I'm, I'm certain we're heading north, so I'm certain that Chester City will probably be on our, on, on our path, yes? Yes, of course. And her eyes narrow a bit and she puts both hands on her hips. And please tell him to write back more. I write to him every day and I assume that he gets it. But he never tells me what's going on with his shop. (laughs) (laughs) I will make it a personal mission of mine that once I've uh, attended to the business that I need to attend up north, I will stop by his shop and tell him just that. (laughs) Hmm. Thank you. But yes, the sisters... He tells me that they were very close, but 
After Abigail died, they seemed to drift apart, and only one of them decided to stay. Hmm, a shame. Ooh, food's ready. And she brings out what looks to be some kind of uh, meatloaf with rice and uh, various types of steamed veggies. And lays them out on the table, a very cramped table that seems to be like the trunk of a tree that has just been cut kind of just across. Go on, eat, okay. eat. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, and I, I look at the kids. Um, I think we should probably stop for now, yes? Aww. We won't uh, be able to stay for very long. Yeah, we do need to Meet. be on the road. But I, I travel through Belconis pretty often, so... Oh, if you've, if you've got somewhere to be here, I can pack it for you. And she kind of goes back into the kitchen and you hear rummaging. And the kids both get plates, kind of some makeshift uh, wooden ones, and they pile things on. Especially Eliza <laughs> like has like a mountain of food. Oh, yeah, and she's probably hungry. <laughs> they, hungry both, girl. they both kind of sit on the carpet Eliza. in the living room and just uh, start to dig in. I'd like to look you have a few... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You go first. Sorry. You first. You first. I do have a few questions, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, of course. What'll it be? Well, uh, you live out here in the woods, but Belkinus, or at least the walls that protect it, are so close by. Ah. Why is that? Well, it gets loud in the city, and what with all the talk about necromancy, I thought... As rough as the woods are, perhaps it might be safer. Show, I... And she looks over to Eliza, shows what I know. I might consider going back into the city very soon. I see. Well, uh, with that understood, uh, I'll glance over at the children. Are they listening right now? Uh, Eliza's there, but Edmund is not. And you can see him walking outside. With a plate. Oh! <gasps> oh I yes, what a good lad. You will be forced to have character development. <laughs> <laughs> it will be spoon fed to you, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and literally uh, spoon fed. Luna's probably I'm going, talking uh, with Eliza, so I don't know if she's listening. I'm going to like take a a half step to the side uh, so that I can. Hopefully, like, if I whisper closely, not be within the earshot of Eliza. She leans in say, as well and has a concerned look on her face. Uh, oh, this, this is a purely innocent question. I am just curious how you all came to meet each other. Oh, well, uh, after my dad left and I had a little place in the city, I didn't know what to do with myself. And so I traveled around a bit. And I saw these two just sitting in a foster home. And I thought perhaps I could start a family. Ah, so they're old enough to understand. Uh, my apologies. For oh, the, of course. <laughs> no oh. worries. Oh. Well. Oh, I love her. I think that it is a very good thing that you have done. Ah, oh, thank you. That's very sweet of you. I will give her a nod. I will take my takeout. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> of course. I, we must be going. And before you leave, in the meantime, while you're having this conversation with her, Enoch, you see a very short boy, a uh, human boy with very curly hair that seems to almost cover his eyes, is holding a plate of meatloaf and steamed veggies and holds it up to you without a word, and he's got a big smile on his face. Eat your greens. If I may, if I may, <laughs> if I may, for, uh, for this added flavor... With the wind blowing, Enoch is just pretending he's sort of floating, just pushing himself up against the wind, just to feel the breeze and to be poked by this kid. Huh? Hey, mister. Oh. You didn't come in to eat, so you must be pretty hungry. I got you some food. <laughs> hey, uh, I love you. And... Thank you, tiny person. And he holds it up yeah, a little bit higher. He's he's standing at his tippy toes. Very tiny person. And 
takes the plate. <laughs> awkwardly doesn't know how to act around kids, which is why he avoids them for the most part. <laughs> he points... Thank you. Hello. He, after he hands you the plate, he points to your arm. You've got a weird glove. <laughs> yes, I do. I swear to God, uh, if you I, just keep crying. <laughs> I do. Uh, you want to hold it? Ooh, yeah. Oh, no. Click, clank. Pulls no. it out of his jacket. No, no. <laughs> he doesn't know any no. better. Oh, God he, damn seeing, it. Seeing you, seeing you detach it, his eyes go wide and he goes, whoa. Yeah, and he holds out I, his hands and he's like hopping in place. <laughs> like a gimme, oh. gimme, gimme. Yeah, and oh, my like... God. Like kind of like, kind of like holding like a a dog treat like over the head of a dog as he just like slightly lowers it, like expecting to be bitten. Yeah, uh, he takes and, he takes hold of it and holds it, kind of cradles it almost. Yeah, I, I uh, made it myself. Wow! Can you make other things? Can you make a tail? Can you make me a tail? I want a tail like a dragon, and he like wiggles his butt, like showing it off to you. <laughs> I want a dragon butt. Uh, uh, Ooh, can you make me fangs? I lost my tooth last summer, and I've got this hole, and I thought it'd be cool if I had fangs. <laughs> and at seeing, seeing this missing tooth, I, I'm not a professional at dentistry, so it, could I possibly medically understand how to put in a fake tooth on a child? Uh, <laughs> you would understand... <laughs> medically that putting a fake tooth on a in a child who's um has not had their adult teeth uh grow in yet would be extremely okay. dangerous <laughs> also yeah painful. all right uh well i don't know anything about kids so <laughs> as he's like oh, oh, just give it a few years you know just uh you know it'll come out and it'll it, you can make it pointy yourself you know, oh just the... Uh, no. he, he pumps his fist. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be the coolest dragon ever! And, you know, he's he's very hyped and he starts, yeah, he starts you're, going you're, off you're... and off about, like, all the different things he's going to do as a dragon. <laughs> and the rest of the party starts to walk out, hearing him talking a mile a minute. Um, <laughs> you can see the, the, the eyes of, please, I don't know what I'm doing. Get out. me out of here. <laughs> Before I walk out, I want to have leaned down to Eliza, um, just real quick. Mm -hmm. All right, little one. So we have to be going now. But like I said to your mum, I come to Belvinus pretty often. So if you'd like, next time I'm here, I'd be happy to stop by and see how how you're doing. You were very brave. She she looks up to you a little bit. You you can see her eyes start to water, but she doesn't cry, and she. She just walks up to you and wraps her arms around the back of your neck as you are leaning I, down. I hug her. I hug her back really tight. <laughs> I won't be gone too long, all right? Stop the bad men, please. Hmm? Will you stop the bad people? Yes. I'm going to try very hard to stop the bad people. And they're never going to get you again. Not Sh ever. She tightens her hug on you and just whispers into your ear, Please don't die. You saw how strong I, I was, right? Mm -hmm. You saw my friend? It's going to take a lot more than a few <laughs> magic tricks to kill me. All right? She gives you a little smile. I've taken I've taken down monsters way scarier than them. Oh, she flinches a, a little bit and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> and I just uh, give her like one last little like head ruffle. Now you be careful now, all right? If you see anyone like that approaching you again, you run and you run far. Okay? She gives you a firm nod. Good and girl. her mom comes by and kind of grasps her gently around the shoulder and gives you a smile. <laughs> Seems I'll be making another trip to Belkinus soon. Uh, a trip back sooner than I thought. And I suppose I'll see you then. Hopefully mm. by that point I'll have given word to your father. Thank and you. I... Of course. Of course. 
happy to help. And I give a nod and I start heading outside where I see, I assume, a stressed Enoch dealing with the child. By this time, yep, Renee yep. is just like, uh, probably... Please, I... I... I, like I know it's a lot of fun, but can I have it what back, is, please? It's what like is it's it's legitimately a part of me. Oh no, he didn't he didn't take it. It was too heavy for him, and like you know, like <laughs> while any the chance any chance that you let go, he would have just like foo, like fallen to the ground with it. Uh, oh, I, I just assumed he was like playing with it like a toy. Oh drag. no 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 no, <laughs> he wouldn't be able to. He's not strong enough to carry it. What was Renee doing? Okay. Um, I was just going to say, like, by the time that Luna got out there, probably Renee would have been, like, talking with the child about, like, the, the middle arm and then been like, oh, you're trying, you want a dragon tail. Ah, okay. Um, hmm. How can we make that happen? Uh, I mean, I can, but, like, I just don't know how to yet. So, just, um, like. Well, then maybe on the way back, girl, maybe at some point he can come back and give you a tail. Hmm? Yes? Give me, like, ten years tops. <gasps> she like leans over. She leans and... over. Go on. Tell me like, it's doable. Maybe, I just don't know how to do it. You don't have to tell him the whole. The, this is where the, it comes to play. Sooner than you think, you'll actually have a tale of your own. And she like leans over. It is not an entire like whispering to Enoch. See, it is not an entire lie, but you're not giving him the idea of it's going to take forever. <laughs> you can see as he's morally struggling with this. <laughs> like he's seeing numbers in the sky, like uh He he does uh have the dragon like sticking out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. I, um, and she's like as, we can paint it any color you like. I don't want to tap it and cast light on it. <laughs> oh <Ooh>. magic dragon <laughs> plush! <laughs> Alright All right. yes you do. He hasn't noticed yet. Uh Renee, what what are you doing? Oh, I mean, I was just, like, talking with the kid a little bit. Like, now mm. she's kind of, like, out of the house. It's, like, that comfy environment was really uncomfortable for her. So she's just out. And she's like, huh, space. Okay. Rip. Like, you, you can tell, like, the visible difference between her being in the house and her being out of the house. Right. Real quick. Yeah. How old is the child, the boy child that is in front of us? Judging by looking at him, he is probably, like, eight human years old. Hmm, never mind. We are not recruiting him. No, oh that's God. not what I was going to do. I, I'm, I may have picked up something in the dungeon that I was going to give to him, but oh. never, never mind. Not that, oh. not the book. Anyway, uh, in that case, uh, I'm going to lean down. The boy, the boy, ch sorry, human child. Did I say boy child? Sorry. Yeah, human child. Human child. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to say... Your sister was very brave earlier. Yeah, she gets really brave a lot of the time, especially when we play tag and I don't follow the rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. That's very good. But she was in danger, and in life you're going to find that the only people you can lean on, or the, the people you can lean on the most, are each other. So mm. you should endeavor to keep her safe as much as she keeps you safe. Mm -hmm. In that, I'm going to hand him that lock from the dungeon that I pilfered. <laughs> Not dun -dun, the lock. Amateur <laughs> lock. <laughs> you hand him the amateur lock, and he goes, If you find... Go on. Oh. If you find the need to keep yourselves stuck in place, then you can use this. Just don't lock it immediately, because you won't be able to unlock it very easily. Or... Better yet, learn how to lock or learn how to unlock it yourself. Those are your choices. And I stand up. He yeah, almost locked it next immediately. Campaign. Right before you said, <laughs> right before you said, don't lock it immediately. He had his hand ready to slam it down like Ben Ten. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Baby, oh, oh, no. such a kid. Baby boy. But by, by the way, you guys are just witnessing Enoch basically. His brain is fried. His soul is like leaving out through his mouth. <laughs> He's just he can't. after after oh. you tell him this, he goes, "Yes, I will take care of my sister with this new lock, and I will be the strongest dragon ever." And he holds out the dragon, and it's light. He's like, "Whoa!" His mind is blown. <laughs> oh, I am the sun dragon. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I, I give off I give off an emotion that is hard to to pin down. Inside, inside, inside. I want to know. Can you show me? I want to know about this stranger like me. Okay. Tell me. It's somehow recognition and pride, but oh. it's strange. It's strange because why would I be prideful of this child? Oh. I don't know him. Oh, so cure all oh, the curiosity He's, knows no bounds. He continues to run around with this dragon up in the sky and kind of flapping behind him his other arm holding on to the lock. And, you know, his mo uh, the mother, Hel Helois, comes out. She goes, all right, all right, Headman, calm down now. You don't want to tire yourself out before the end of the day. Now let the, let the grown-ups go on their journey. And he uh, continues to just be amazed at the bright uh, wooden dragon toy and his mother takes note of it and she just like oh boy goodbye and she she waves to you as Eliza does as well very gently <laughs> goodbye Renee will wave I'll back. see you soon farewell and I begin to walk off into the woods all right and that will be where we called the session today. Oh, no, give right. us more. No. Yeah. No, that was so wholesome and I sweet. demand more. Yeah. Mm.